You are listening to part 16 of the podcast series, How Successful People Think. When I went off to college as an 18-year-old, one of my first classes was Psychology 101. The teacher wanted us to learn as much about ourselves as others, so we were constantly taking tests, filling out personality profiles, and self-assessment questionnaires. I vividly remember completing a profile a few weeks into the course that measured various natural talents. I don't recall in what area I recorded my highest score, but my lowest score was in creativity. That crushed me. Not only did I value creativity and desire it, but I knew I required it in order to pursue my chosen profession. I was studying to go into the ministry. That meant that I would be spending hours and hours every week of my life writing, and I would speak to an audience at least two or three times a week for the next four decades. If I don't have the innate ability to come up with the creative thoughts myself, I thought that I'll mine the creative thoughts of others. I knew that I could become a collector of thoughts more easily than I could become a creator of thoughts. Every day during the three and a half decades since then, I have read great books, gathered great thoughts, and filed them away by subject for future use. For years, as I've written lessons and books, when I need a quote, story, or article on a topic, I need only to look at my files to find several excellent pieces of material that I had filed away just for such an occasion. By becoming a person who was always on the lookout for creative ideas by others, I learned to become a creative thinker myself. You can change your way of thinking just as I did. Creative thinking isn't necessarily original thinking. Most often, creative thinking is a composite of other thoughts a person discovers along the way. Even the great artists, whom we consider to be highly original, learned from the masters before them, modeled their work on that of others, and brought together a host of ideas and styles to create their own work in the form of something new. Do you consider yourself to be highly creative? Perhaps you're not even sure what I mean when I begin to ask about whether you are a creative thinker. Let me explain a few of my observations. These are characteristics that creative thinkers have in common. Creative thinkers value ideas. Creativity is about having ideas, lots of them. You will have ideas only if you value ideas. People most often explore ideas in their own areas of interest. For example, that's what my wife Margaret does. She has a great love for design and interior decoration. Often when we're out together looking for antiques or decor items, I am amazed at how quickly she can find exactly what she's looking for. Margaret gets dozens of catalogs and magazines, and she regularly reviews them to see new items and trends. Because she values ideas, she always has lots of them. Creative thinkers explore options. I've yet to meet a creative thinker who didn't love options. Exploring a multitude of possibilities helps to stimulate the imagination. And when it comes to creativity, imagination is crucial. People who know me well will tell you that I place a very high value on options. Why? Because they provide the key to finding the best answer not the only answer. For example, whenever team members come to me with a problem, I insist that they also supply three possible ways to solve them as well. Anyone can point out a problem. Only people who think well can present possible solutions. Creative thinkers embrace ambiguity. Creative people don't feel the need to stamp out uncertainty. They see all kinds of inconsistencies and gaps in life and they often take delight in exploring those gaps or in using their imagination to fill them in themselves. Creative thinkers celebrate the offbeat. Creativity, by its very nature, often explores off the beaten path and goes against the grain. Diplomat and longtime president of Yale University, Keenman Brewster, said, There is a correlation between the creative and the screwball, so we must suffer the screwball gladly. To foster creativity in yourself or others, be willing to tolerate a little oddness. 